Alrighty, Duluk, the high and mighty lord of these people. Y'all think you're funny because he's so sunny, so you treat him like a bunny, but he still has more money than you, honey. Alright, story time, so why does Diluc hate the Knights of Useless? Alright, so this is from the Webtoon series, so it's easy to tell. So Diluc's father was a businessman who wanted to be part of these assholes when he was young, and he was proud of his son for joining their ranks while he himself couldn't. After celebrating this tragic event, they were heading home but was attacked by Ursa the Drake. At that moment, Diluc's father used a pyro delusion to defeat the Drake, but as most of you know, from Tepe, the ability had its price. So he died, the moment Knights of Useless showed up. But that's not why he hates them, oh no. Far worse, far far worse. This son of a bitch, whose name is Inspector Erock, I don't know how to pronounce this dipshit name, ordered Diluc to cover his own father's death for the reputation of Knights of useless as he belittle his life by calling his father a mere businessman. What a piece of sh**! And they still won't let Noel be in the ranks. What the fu- Alright, starting with his Eldo abilities. Eldo skill, Red Ranger's Fury. <clears throat> Diluc tines his grip and swiftly slashes with pyro damage. He slash with their own cringy ass names. Justice, Courage, and Duty. Slaying his enemies by burning into their skin with his sharp-edged blade. But in short, it's Bennett's E with three fucking charges. So, as simple as his skill is, Diluc can consecutively damage opponents while combining his normal attacks, allowing for elemental applications. So he can either vaporize or melt with his elemental skill. I'm no Diluc main, but I think the combo for Diluc is just auto attack, E, and repeat. So you can vaporize or melt with your ability. Elemental Burst. Oyoku Tensho! Diluc strikes a red Goku pose and buckling up for a Taishu Kogeki, shining in the cold darkness. Radiating with confidence, engulfing himself with his blazing conviction to fuck shit up. But in short, he summons a f***ing phoenix that does big damage, and that's it. After he does this, his blade is now infused with pyro, allowing his normal attacks to deal pyro damage, which cannot be overwritten. Probably one of the simplest abilities in the game. You should really bring the Knights of Favonius with you next time. What? Moving on to passive talents, passive 1, Diluc's charge attack stamina cost is decreased by 50% and its duration is increased by 3 seconds. I read the entire description because I bet no one uses this. Passive 2, blessing of these no- Your power infusion lasts 4 seconds longer and Diluc gains 20% power damage bonus during this effect. Passive 3, refunds 15% of the ores that was used when crafting claymore weapons. It's too bad that I got him like, a year later. Rain. If only you could cleanse the corrupt souls of this world. <laughs> Nerd. Moving on to Constellations. Constellation 1. Diluc deals 15% more damage to opponents who already lost a limb. Constellation 2. Every time Diluc is damaged, his masochist fetish allows Diluc to deal more damage and attack faster for 10 seconds. Constellation 3. Your Red Ranger Fury is now Red Ranger... Uh... Anger. Constellation 4, using your Red Ranger Anger every 2 seconds allows you to deal more damage with your next Anger. Constellation 5, your Phoenix now carries a Harbinger of Dawn. Constellation 6, after casting Red Ranger's Anger, your normal attack damage and speed is increased by 30% and it will no longer interrupt the normal attack combo. What does that fucking mean? Well, without C6, Diluc's normal attack will always reset to one hit damage when you use your Red Ranger's Anger. With a C6, that interruption no longer exists, which allows Diluc to move on to his two hit damage even after using Red Ranger's Anger. But I'll never experience this. 
because I'm not planning to get a C6 to look. Right? A darkness that seethes with evil, full of demons that must be vanquished, will take more than a blade to be torn asunder. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! Moving on to artifacts. For beginners, two-piece berserker, two-piece martial arts, two-piece soldier should be fine. For endgame, I think at this point you have two options, Crimson Witch and Gladiators. Personally, I wouldn't recommend four-piece Gladiators because one, it doesn't affect his E, and I'm pretty sure Deluxe E is an important part of his kit for DPS. So I would recommend four-piece Witch or two-piece Witch and two-piece Glad or Shimanawas. The reason why this is better is because it's more consistent since the Luke's sword is going to be on fire 90% of the time and the piece set ability overall benefits your entire kit since they're all on fire. Also, the 4 piece set promotes you to vaporize and melt for more damage. But if you don't have the complete set yet, then 2 piece Witch and 2 piece Gladiator is still a good compromise since it'll have no restrictive buffs anyways. Oh, and also, fuck this domain! For primary stats, you do want to go for attack percentage for Sans, power damage bonus for Goblets, and then crit rate or crit damage for your circlet. For substats, you do want to go for crit damage and crit rate, and then attack percentage, then elemental mastery for big vaporize and melt damage. Some use the winds whistling to drown out the sound of their crimes. Oh my god, shut up! Moving on to weapons, starting with 5 stars, Wolf's Gravestone, best DPS claymore in the game, fits the looks drip, buffs your entire team hands down, best claymore. Scour Pride, also a very powerful claymore, great ability, but personally I don't see the reason for you to carry an energy recharge weapon on a 40 cost character, but still better than every 4 star weapons. Song of Broken Pines has a really high base attack, ability is really good, it's just that the primary stats is pointless for Deluke and his attack stat is higher with Wolf's Gravestone anyway, so probably wouldn't go for this. Unforged, another extremely powerful claymore, even better with shields. I would recommend it if you're using a shield unit with him. Moving on to 4 stars, the Tuna. Stat wise, this claymore is great, the ability is exclusive to his burst, but I would say that it's pretty good. Blackcliff, crit damage, high base attack, decent ability, but with the cost of your star glitter. Credit card, amazing ability, high crit rate, but costs your wallet. Then we have Akumaru. With higher refinement rank, I'd say this is like Tuna that smoked in Nakuid, so if you want to focus on your burst, sure. But I think most Diluke mains will say that his normal attack and Red Ranger's Fury is more important. Moving on to free to plays, Archaic, yes, pretty decent claymore for Diluke. Inazuma Blade, probably, maybe. White Blind, no. Snow Tombed, fuck no. Night has fallen. That's his way of saying good evening. <laughs> now for teams, personally I think Vaporize and Melt is almost mandatory for Deluxe team comp, and I don't think I even have to mention that he's kind of a selfish DPS. Some say Overload is great, but I think it's safe to say that Vaporize and Melt is just better, cause you know, they can crit. So for Hydro, Xing Chu is definitely the best passive Hydro applicator, helping you with consistent Vaporize with Deluke. You also have the choice of using Chung Yun with Deluke, and from experience, it felt really smooth. So Melt or Vaporize, what to choose? Well, first of all, for power units, I believe the Melt multiplier is higher than Vaporize. However, the issue comes in with consistency. So if you look at the list of prior units, most of them are pretty passive, meaning they're usually quick swap units. Personally, I think Kaya and Rosaria's application is too slow. Chi Chi's is almost up to speed, but cooldown is really long. And then there's the other five star cryo units that are pretty good at the job, but, but I recommend to use them as a DPS due to the fact that they can probably destroy a whole country. The only one you can control in this case is Chung Yun, which is basically synced with Deluxe auto attack as it converts his auto to cryo, so it's perfect combo. But here's the problem, Deluxe Burst. After you summon your Phoenix, you overwrite Chung Yun's ability and your autos are now pyro, so this just ends up leading your way to Xing Chu, the consistency champion. Making your enemies wet before Deluxe can touch them. <laughs> but seriously, this is why everyone uses Xing Chu with Deluke. But back to the cryo units, I think you can still use them. I guess having Kaya and Rosaria on the same team will still help you apply more cryo and give you more crit rate, so I guess you can do that as well. Other than that, uh, I recommend Power Resonance, so naturally the character that everyone uses, Bennett and Shang Ling, who does big PP damage. Animo and Geo are pretty great as well. I like Albedo, he does good blossom damage, and he makes crystals for Deluke, which gives Deluke some protection. 
<laughs> and then we have his assistant, Sucrose, who adds a crap ton of elemental mastery and gives you an elemental damage boost, so bigger vaporize and melt damage. But I personally think every Geo and Animal will work great with him, except for maybe main DPS units like Xiao and maybe Ningguang. So how the f*** do you play Diluc? Well, he's super easy to play, but okay. Uh, he's selfish, but also not really, because you can swap and his abilities will still be active. His skill and his burst, which is really nice. But I guess spamming your allies' as burst beforehand isn't such a bad idea for Diluc. But some tips, I guess. Number one. Red Ranger's Fury regenerates one particle for his first and third swing, and gets two particles for his second swing, so in total, he gets four particles from his skill. And considering how his cooldown is only 10 seconds, you can consistently generate energy as you just spam your abilities. So I guess do that while you combo. Number 2. Combo. Remember, auto attack. E. Repeat, it's really not that hard. You might say, J, I don't care. Okay fine, I'll give you a good analogy. When you kill Timmy's birds, do you kill them one by one? No, because just like their cowardly food dispenser, they're scared of everything. So you have to kill them in one go. So what does this have to do with Timmy? Okay, uh, well, you're the guy who's just walking past a kid who's been shitting on you for an entire year while I'm here just trying to give you an option to shit back on the kid because that's appropriate. But jokes aside, I know some of you have been requesting for Diluc very frequently, and some of you think I don't like him, so let me clear something up. One, I got him like a month ago, and zero resources. Two, it's not that I don't like Diluc, I love Diluc. He hates Nice of Omenius. I do too. Three, watch this video for an explanation. And four, f*** you, Timmy. Other than that, leave a like and subscribe, and comment down below to beat the YouTube algorithm. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye-bye, guys.